40 years ago, on October 6, 1981, wearing a black ceremonial uniform at a military parade, the Egyptian president was shot down by four uniformed men who machine-gunned him as he was watching an Egyptian Air Force fly past. The conspirators killed five people, including foreign envoys attending the parade, and the entire assassination was recorded on film, a BBC production, a part of the series Infamous Assassinations, his only crime, negotiating a peace treaty with Israel and thereby attempting to alienate the Arab world from violence against the Israeli government. Sadat's death set in train the disastrous road to the war in Lebanon in 1982, the creation of Hezbollah, and the seeds of Al-Qaeda. Sadat was admirably an unpredictable leader, deliberately and thoughtfully so. His famous 1977 speech offering to visit Jerusalem was dismissed as a rhetorical flourish by the CIA in the president's daily brief the next morning. A week later, Sadat was in Jerusalem. He made peace with Israel at Camp David with the stellar support of U.S. President Jimmy Carter. But for most Arabs, he had betrayed the Palestinian cause at the Maryland summit meeting and was considered a traitor and an outcast by 1981. Now, whether his actions were deserving of death is an entirely different matter on its own. But in this video, we want to profile and look into the life of the African leader who was murdered in cold blood for making peace with Israel, the man Anwar Sadat. If you're new here, welcome. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel and turn on post notifications in order not to miss out on any of our videos. So let's get straight into this. Sadat was a rather calm and peace-loving type of a leader. Muhammad Anwar el-Sadat was born on the 25th of December, 1918, and was an Egyptian politician and military officer who served as the third president of Egypt from the 15th of October, 1970, until his assassination by fundamentalist army officers on the 6th of October, 1981. Sadat was a senior member of the Free Officers who overthrew King Farouk in the Egyptian Revolution of 1952 and a close confidant of President Gamal Abdel Nasser, under whom he served as vice president twice and whom he succeeded as president in 1970. In 1978, Sadat and Menachem Begin, Prime Minister of Israel, signed a peace treaty in cooperation with United States President Jimmy Carter, for which they were recognized with the Nobel Peace Prize. Sadat had a rough childhood as he was born in Mit Abu el Kam, part of Manufia Governorate to a poor family, one of 13 brothers and sisters. One of his brothers, Atef Sadat, later became a pilot and was killed in action during the October War of 1973. His father, Anwar Mohammed el Sadat, was an Upper Egyptian, and his mother, Sid al Bahrain, was born to an Egyptian mother and a Sudanese father. He graduated from the Royal Military Academy in Cairo, the capital of what was then the Kingdom of Egypt in 1938, and was appointed to the Signal Corps. He entered the army as a second lieutenant and was posted to the Anglo-Egyptian Sudan. There he met Gamal Abdel Nasser, and along with several other junior officers, they formed the Free Officers, an organization committed to expelling the British presence from Egypt and removing royal corruption. During the Second World War, Sadat was imprisoned by the British for his efforts to obtain help from the Axis powers in expelling the occupying British forces. After the end of the Second World War, at that time, he had met with the secret society that decided to assassinate Amin Osman, Minister of Finance in the Waft government, and the head of the Egyptian-British Friendship Society due to his strong sympathy with the British. Osman was assassinated in January 1946. Following the assassination of Amin Osman, Sadat returned again and finally to prison. In Karmadan prison, he faced the most difficult ordeals of imprisonment by being held in solitary confinement, but the first accused in the Hussein Tofik case escaped. And after there was no criminality evidence, all the charges fell and the suspect went free. And the young officer, Salah Zulfikar, at that time was the officer in charge in the prison, and he believed in his heart that Sadat was a hero and that he played a patriotic role towards his country, even though he was imprisoned. The officer then decided to regularly provide food and water to Sadat and helped his family a lot in obtaining visitor permits to check on him. Anwar Sadat was active in many political movements, including the Muslim Brotherhood, the Fascist Young Egypt, the Propalis Iron Guard of Egypt, and the secret military group called the Free Officers. Along with his fellow free officers, Sadat participated in the military coup that launched the Egyptian Revolution of 1952, which overthrew King Farouk on the 23rd of July of that year. 
Sadat was assigned to announce the news of the revolution to the Egyptian people over the radio networks. During the presidency of Gamal Abdel Nasser, Sadat was appointed Minister of State in 1954. He was also appointed editor of the newly founded daily al Gumhuria. In 1959, he assumed the position of secretary to the National Union. Sadat was the president of the National Assembly from 1960 to 1968 and then vice president and member of the Presidential Council in 1964. He was reappointed as vice president again in December 1969 until he finally took office as president in 1970 after he took over his mentor, Gamal Abdel Nasser. Internal unrest dominated Sadat's final months in office. Sadat denied claims that local problems had sparked the unrest. Thinking that the Soviet Union was enlisting the aid of its friends in Libya and Syria to spark an insurrection that would finally force him from office. After a botched military takeover in June 1981, Sadat launched a massive crackdown that led to the incarceration of countless opposition leaders. It's been claimed that Sadat was assassinated at the peak of his unpopularity, despite the fact that he still enjoyed high levels of popularity in Egypt. Islamists had profited earlier in his administration from the rectification revolution and the liberation of activists imprisoned under Nasser. Sadat's Sinai Treaty with Israel, however, infuriated Islamists, especially the radical Egyptian Islamic Jihad. In order to undertake a complete overthrow of the existing order in Egypt, the group was said to be gathering weaponry and recruiting military officers, according to interviews and information acquired by writer Lawrence Wright. Abd al-Zumar, a colonel in the military intelligence, served as El Jihad's chief strategist. According to him, the organization's plan was to kill the nation's top officials, seize the army and state security headquarters, the telephone exchange building, and of course the radio and television building, where news of the Islamic revolution would then be broadcast, sparking, as he anticipated, a popular uprising against secular authority throughout the nation. The arrest of an agent carrying vital information in February 1981 gave Egyptian authorities advance notice of El Jihad's scheme. Sadat issued a highly unpopular order to pick up more than 1,500 persons in September, including many jihad members, Coptic clergy, the Coptic Pope, and intellectuals and activists of all ideologies. Additionally, all non-government press was outlawed. The military jihad cell led by Lieutenant Khalid Islambouli was missed during the sweep, and he would go on to successfully assassinate Anwar Sadat that October. According to Talaat Qasim, the former chairman of the Gama Islamiya, who was interviewed by Middle East Report, the assassination was planned and the killer was recruited by his group, the Islamic group, not Islamic Jihad. Two weeks prior to the killing, members of the group's Majlis al-Shura, which was led by the infamous blind sheikh, were detained, but they failed to reveal the existing intentions, and Islambouli was able to assassinate Sadat. During the yearly victory parade conducted in Cairo to commemorate Egypt's passage through the Suez Canal on October 6, 1981, Sadat was killed. While standing in front of the grandstand, Islambouli fired his assault rifle into Sadat's body, gravely killing the president. Eleven people were also slain in addition to Sadat, including the ambassador of Cuba, a general from the Sultanate of Oman, a bishop of the Coptic Orthodox Church, and Samir Helmi, the head of Egypt's Central Auditing Agency, Vice President Hosni Mubarak, Irish Defense Minister James Tully, and four U.S. military liaison personnel were among the 28 wounded. Lieutenant Khalid Islambouli was in charge of the assassination team after Omar Abdel Rahman provided a fact approving the murder. In April 1982, Islambouli was tried, found guilty, given the death penalty, and put to death by firing squad. Sadat, during his lifetime, altered Egypt's course during his 11 years in office by rejecting many of Nasserism's political and economic beliefs, re-establishing a multi-party system, and introducing the Infitah economic policy. He became a hero in Egypt and for a time the greater Arab world when, as president, he led Egypt in the Yom Kippur War of 1973 to retake Egypt's Sinai Peninsula, which Israel had held since the Six-Day War of 1967. He then began talks with Israel, which resulted in the Egypt-Israel peace deal. This won him and Menachem begin the Nobel Peace Prize, making Sadat the first Muslim Nobel laureate. Hosni Mubarak, Sadat's vice president, who suffered a hand injury in the assault, took over as president. 
a record number of dignitaries from all over the world attended Sadat's funeral, including three previous U.S. presidents who showed up simultaneously for the first time, Gerald Ford, Jimmy Carter, and Richard Nixon. The sole head of an Arab state who attended the funeral was the president of Sudan, Ghaffar Nimeri. Only three of the Arab League's 24 member states, Oman, Somalia, and Sudan, sent any representatives Menachem Begin, the prime leader of Israel, regarded Sadat as a close friend and insisted on going to the funeral, walking through it to respect the Sabbath. Crossing the street from the place where he was killed, Sadat was interred in Cairo's monument to the unknown soldier. Khalid Islambouli's murderer, as well as future Al-Qaeda commander Ayman al-Zawahiri, Omar Abdel Rahman, and Abd al-Hamid Kishk was accused of killing him. Over 300 Islamic extremists were indicted in this case. Because of Zawahiri's proficiency with English and the fact that the trial was covered by the foreign press, the defendant's de facto spokesperson. In 1984, Zawahiri was granted his freedom from jail. On March 11, 2011, two Islamic Jihad commanders Tarek and Abu al zomor who had been detained in relation to the murder, were freed. Talat Sadat, the late president's nephew, asserted an international conspiracy despite these facts. Less than a month after giving the interview in which he claimed Egyptian generals were responsible for his uncle's murder, he was sentenced to a year in prison for defaming Egypt's military forces on October 31, 2006. He further asserted that Israel and the United States were both complicit in the death. No one from the Special Personal Protection Group of the late president fired a single shot during the killing, and not one of them has been put on trial, he said in an interview with a Saudi television channel. That brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching, and be sure to drop your thoughts in the comments section about the life of this great leader, murdered for a peace treaty.